Hey y'all, it's Daisy Kane, and thank you for watching my very first review on my relaunch of my YouTube channel. Actually, it's not my first review. I used to do these um, about five or six years ago before I moved from Virginia to upstate New York, and I decided to get back to the swing of things. And I figured, what best way to relaunch my channel by going by doing a redo of the first review I ever did? And it's a movie called. Sorry. <laughs> it's a movie called The Casserole Club. It was made originally back in um, 2011. Um, I became fascinated with it because I discovered it on Netflix um, around that time. And then also I heard rumblings that um, Kevin from the Backstreet Boys starred in it. And anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge Backstreet Boys fan. And I've had a crush on Kevin since forever and I still love him to this day and when he left the group of course I was heartbroken but he left the group to pursue other things and one of those things was acting and this was one of his projects so that piqued my interest but then when I started doing more research on it it actually kind of like I kind of became fascinated with the director because I thought he did an amazing job with this film like the cinematography was amazing um I think they filmed part of it in like Palm Springs. They did um, parts of it in his um, hometown in Kansas. And I just love his body of work. Um, I'll go into more details about it. Um, like I said, the name of the movie is The Casserole Club, made in 2011. The screenwriter is a man named Frankie Krantz. The director is Steve Balderson. Um, they've worked together on other films like Stuck and Culture um, Shock, which is also a great film. Um, and I know Steve Balderson's done other um, movies like um, Helltown and a movie called Occupying um, Ed, which I had the privilege of auditioning for. It was like a really small role. Long story short, I didn't get it, but it was nice that he actually took the time. Like he actually came across like my review of his film, The Casserole Club, and actually took the time to reach out to me. And it was just nice to kind of talk to him. And since then, I've just been kind of following his career and. I think he's an amazing director. So, um, this film, The Casserole Club, was set in the 1960s, and one of the many reasons why I actually liked it, because, not, like I said, the cinematography is amazing, and I like the fact that, like, I've, I've always been a fan of that era, like the, like that vintage kind of era, like the swing dresses and, like, the cocktail parties and things like that. And I like the fact that he took the time to really get like a campy feel of that era, but also there's a lot of dark undertones in the film. And the general premise is a group of housewives, they gather weekly to swap like casseroles and recipes, which is, I guess, normal for that time. But then after a while, they get tired of the monotony and they want to shake things up. So they decide to invite their husbands. But of course, when they invite their husbands more than recipes start getting swapped and things take a very um carnal <laughs> kind of turn um but I will say this I love the fact that even though like there's a it's like basically a lot of sexual themes in the um, movie I thought the sex scenes were very tasteful tastefully filmed I mean there's like some mild nudity of course but it's not like flat out porn and I thought um there was great chemistry among the cast and I thought the casting was great I love the fact how all the couple like the pairing of the couples like a lot of them like a lot of the wives seemed like step for wives or they were all trying to like all the couples were trying to be like cookie cutter or you know keep up appearances which is what a lot of people like a lot of people tend to do in marriages at least that's the perception and I like the fact that it's kind of obvious that there's obvious unsatisfied needs and deep-rooted issues and secrets among them amongst them sorry <laughs> and like I said the cinematography was amazing um I love the fact how the soundtrack and the how the director used the, the use of light and color and like the costuming was brilliant and I love how he used like certain certain lighting for to depict certain moods and certain scenes. Like my favorite example is like I loved how he used muted colors the day after all the couples hooked up. Spoilers, sorry. I should probably say this review has spoilers, but spoiler alert: the couples end up like swinging and swapping couples and stuff. And I love how the director using muted colors to depict the day after 
and it kind of was like a sobering moment. And then he used like muted colors again when another spoiler tragedy strikes. And I love the story because it kind of even to this day, like anybody in relationships or anybody that's like married or just in like long committed relationships, some people feel like I'm not like that, but I feel like some people that are in committed relationships kind of feel like every once in a while they have what's that term like a seven year itch where they're or like what if and I love how the dynamic of how the men and women in the situation like kind of broke down the whole situation like the men most of the men accepted what happened and the women overanalyzed the situation which is kind of not trying to like I'm not trying to like um I guess marginalize anybody but you know how women seem to be more in tune with their feelings and they um are more in touch with their emotions so a lot of them overanalyze the situation however they all eventually decide to continue on with their extracurricular sexual activities however as that happens, it becomes a Pandora's box of issues. Um, there's like affairs. Um, there's certain people that are grappling with their sexuality. Um, and then there's other observations that we get to see throughout the film, like self-loathing. And then other, hopefully this doesn't trigger anybody, but there's other things like self-harm. And just like, mainly, I think the main theme to me is just like, the idea of everybody has their own perception of what perfection is on the outside, like keeping up appearances. But I also thought like something neat about the film is that the people that um kind of brought up the idea of swapping couples, I guess you could say the bad influences of the group, seem the most stable out of all these couples. And I love that because because the, they don't seem like they're keeping up appearances. They seem very free in their behavior. They are open. They don't care what people think about them. And they're the ones that try to get the rest of their friends to try to, you know, jump on their bandwagon. But I feel like they all interpreted it in a different way. And I thought that was kind of interesting, like that interesting dynamic where the people that you would think are the bad apples in the group are the most stable out of everybody. So I found that dynamic to be interesting. And, um... Let's see. And I love the fact that, like, as the story progresses, other elements come come into play. I won't give any spoilers out because I don't want to ruin the film too much. But I'll just say tragedy strikes and it becomes a sobering moment for everybody. And I love how that kind of pushes the story on because the dynamics change even further. And I love that in the end, like, I love the year that he picked. Um, It was kind of like the 19... I think it was 1969, so it was like the late 60s. And a lot of people think that particular era was like the loss of innocence. Innocence because um he uses certain... He uses certain historical events to kind of like pinpoint the loss of innocence. And I thought that was kind of like a great tie-in with everything that was going on in the film as well. Um... So I will say overall, I particularly enjoyed this film. Like I just watched it maybe like a week or two ago while being stuck in quarantine and it still holds up. It's very entertaining. Um, even though it's like an indie film and it's campy and it might not be for some people, I will say that I think it's one of his best, um, one of Steve Balderson's best films. Um, it won like five awards at the New York Vision Fest. Like I said, there's a, um, the, the cast was like amazing. I think two of the breakout um, performers are um, <laughs> Kevin from the Backstreet Boys, of course. And I'm not just saying that because I've been in love with the man since I was a kid. But I think just he plays like a guy named Conrad. And I feel like even though he was so such a bastard, like he's so despicable, just I feel like he really immersed himself in that character and like his last scene like he has like this deep kind of it's not it's like a monologue but it's just like the scene where he he just seems so shattered that it's very 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 poignant and I thought he was amazing in it. and another person um who I enjoyed in the film was this character um named Jerome which is actually played by Daniela C if you know who that is um 
they were in the casserole club. Um, they were in the L word and they're an amazing performer. And I know they're doing music right now. Like I haven't heard any of their stuff, but I thought she, I thought they were amazing in this movie because Jerome kind of seemed like the opposite of most of the women in the group. And I like how Jerome had a different dynamic with her partner. And even though their roles were kind of shifted, you still saw that they had a deep love for each other in a sense. Um, like I said, and then I also enjoyed like the historical parallels in the film. They used um, the death of Julie Garland, the death of, um, the death of Sharon Tate and the moon landing towards the end. And I just love that it's obvious that the, the director and the screenwriter did their research on that era in the film and you could tell that they were really it was like a really passion it was like a labor of love um like project um if anybody's interested you can find it on dvd blu-ray and amazon you can pretty much download it i think um he made all his stuff available on his website i'll try to include the link on here and hopefully you guys aren't complaining about the quality of this video too much. Sorry, I'm kind of recording this on my Chromebook. Hopefully within the next week or so, I'm going to be getting like a new GoPro. So the quality of these videos will be a lot better. And I hope you enjoy this and I should have a new one up by next week.